Hey, pre-calc friends, and welcome to section 4.2, where again, we're continuing a little bit of review of geometry, but definitely a big chunk of trigonometry, so a little bit of new stuff too. But I think you'll like what we're doing today. We got sine, we got cosine, and we have the tangent functions, which hopefully you remember from the end of your geometry days. And they're all defined, as you see down here, given a right triangle like you see here. And if I label an angle, remember we call this angle theta over here, then we can label the sides relative to that angle. For example, right all the way across the triangle, we have that side across from the theta. And because that's across from the theta, we call that one the opposite side. And because this one right over here is next to him, he is the adjacent side. Now, this side over here is also the adjacent side. But because he is always, always located across from the right angle, we're going to call him the hypotenuse. All right, so just a little review from geometry. Given an angle theta, the side all the way across from it in the triangle is called the opposite side. The one adjacent to it, that's not the hypotenuse, is the adjacent. And then we end with the hypotenuse, which is always across from the right angle. Okay, so we define sine. When I take the sine of an angle, the sine function is the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse side. And these are all lengths. So the length of the opposite side divided by the length of the hypotenuse. The cosine function we define as being the length of the adjacent side divided by the length of the hypotenuse side. And finally, last but not least, the tangent function. The tangent measures the length of the opposite side of a triangle divided by the length of the adjacent side. So as you see, I put big capital letters there to kind of help you remember a very quick shortcut to remember which sides are which functions. And that's our friend here, SOHCAHTOA, which again, maybe you heard from your geometry days. But this is a really great way to remember that sine, the sine is the opposite over hypotenuse, that's your so. The cosine is the adjacent divided by hypotenuse, and toa is tangent is opposite over adjacent. So we'll say soca toa a lot this year, and again, that always helps you remember the different functions and which sides are related to them. Now, we learned these three in geometry, but did you know, did you know there are actually three more, and those are the reciprocals of our soca toa. By reciprocal, I mean one over. For example, if I take the sine function, I do one divided by the sine, we make something that's called the cosecant. The cosecant is one divided by the sine. And as you see, a lot of these trig functions, we take the first three letters, and that becomes sort of our abbreviation. But we can't do it here, right? Because cosecant has the first three letters of cos, and we have a cos function, so we can't do that. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take the first three consonants. Okay, one over sine is called the cosecant, and it's abbreviated with CSC. That is the cosecant of theta, one over sine of theta. Okay, what if I do one divided by the cosine? That reciprocal is the secant. And that one, we can take the first three letters, and we get secant. Secant is one divided by the cosine of the angle. And finally, the one that's probably easiest to remember is the cotangent, because it has the word tangent in it. So cotangent, or cot, C-O-T, is one divided by the tangent. So now we have six tricks, sine, cos, and tan, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. So start to remember all six of those. And now we get to play. So the new thing for today is let's actually find a good right triangle to play with. And we're going to find, if I give you an angle theta, which you can see in the diagram right over here, relative to that theta, can you find all six trig functions? Can you find the sine of theta, the cos of theta, the tan of theta, and all the recips? Now, with this right triangle, notice I have one, two, but I'm missing this side. This side looks like it's the hypotenuse, and I'm missing it. And we need it, because a lot of these trig functions require the hypotenuse. So, do you remember from geometry days? If you have two sides of a right triangle, how do you find the third side? Oh, do you remember? It's coming back to you. There's our good old friend Pythagoras, or Pythagorean theorem, which says that the sum of the squares of the two sides of a right triangle is equal to the square of the hypotenuse. 
where a squared plus b equals c squared. a squared, b squared, c squared. Remember that. Memorize that if you don't remember. And with a right triangle, you can put either a or b here and a or b here. But definitely, the uh, hypotenuse is always, always your c. Okay, so can we find what that is? I know that I have a is 2, so I'll do 2 squared plus b is 3, 3 squared. And that's going to help me find c squared. In some problems, we have the hypotenuse and we're missing one of the legs. So we have to make sure we write this in the correct order. Here, we're missing the hypotenuse. So I think we wrote this okay. All right, 2 squared, 3 squared. So 4 plus 9, awesome. So c equals the square root, if I take the square root of both sides, of 13. And it's positive. I know we would get positive or negative when we take the square root. But we are talking about geometry. These are actual lengths and sides of triangles. So we'll consider this the positive. Now, no decimals, no calculators here, and I don't think the square root of 13 simplifies anymore, so it is what it is. All right, well, let me erase my triangle here so I get a little bit more space now. I can write that in. So now we've got that side, and now we know C is the square root of 13. Really quick, before we do trig, can we just also identify what these sides are? If that's theta here, what would we call that one? It's all the way across in the triangle, right? So that would be the opposite. This one down here is right next to it. And then we already called it that, but just make sure you know that's our hypotenuse. All right, friends, here we go. Let's find all six trig values of this triangle. All right, let's do just in a row. One, two, three, four, five, six. So number one, let's find the cosine of theta. Now, if we're thinking so ka toa, ka, ka, that's the adjacent over the hypotenuse, which here on the triangle, if I look at the length of the adjacent, that's the 2, and the hypotenuse is square root of 13. Great. Now, one thing we have to remember from our algebra days is we don't like to leave radicals in the denominator. So can we clean that up? Do you remember how to do that? There's a little hint in the instructions, too. Mm-hmm, there it is. And we always want to do this, folks. Always rationalize your denominator. Remember to do that is we're going to multiply top and bottom by that same radical that you see. All right, clean up some work over here so I can see. This becomes, all right, on top, 2 times the square root of 13 is just, and the square root of 13 times the square root of 13, it kills the radicals. That's why we're doing it, and you're just left with 13. Great. Now, before I walk away, I'm just going to make sure the radical has been reduced. There's no radical on the bottom. Uh, let's see. These numbers outside can't be reduced at all. No, I think we're fine. I think we're good. I like this. This is the cosine of theta. That one's done. Great. Okay, number two. Let's do the sine of theta. And at any moment, if you want to just pause the video and try these on your own, I bet you can get it too. So Katoa is O over H, opposite over hypotenuse. In this triangle, I'm looking at the triangle, I see 3 is your opposite, and root 13 is your hypotenuse. Don't forget to rationalize. And this one, you get 3 squared of 13 over just a value of 13. And I'm feeling that looks pretty reduced, looks pretty simplified. We are golden. All right, number 3. Number 3 is asking for secant. Ooh, interesting. Okay, well, secant... You need to flip back and check. That's 1 over the cosine. So now what I could do is I'm going to literally find the cosine and do 1 divided by that, which means here's my cosine over here. So before I write down anything, this is what's in my brain. I need to do 1 divided by this cosine value that I got. But look at that. That looks terrible. Ew. I'm going to have to flip it. And if I flip it by multiplying by the sip, I actually get... 13 over 2 root 13. Oh, interesting. Hey, check that out. Do you notice how I just basically took this fraction here and I just flipped it? That's actually legal when you do the recip. When you find these recip trig values, you can just take the original cosine, flip your answer, and work with that. But here's the problem. Do you know what I just made by doing that? I made another rack on the bottom. So how about this? Ready? Here's a shortcut. I look ahead and I know that if I'm going to flip that cosine to get secant, I'm going to get a rack on the bottom. Ew. So what if I didn't flip that one? What if I flipped this one? That's also the cosine, right? 
We just happen to rationalize it to get this friend. But what if I flipped this guy? Watch what happens. When I flip him, I should get square root of 13 over 2. Right? When you find the reciprocal trig, you can just take the original function, cosine, sine, or tan, and just literally flip the fraction. Now look, look at that. Isn't that amazing? The fact that I don't have to rationalize, he's already cleaned up and ready to go. I did that in one step. Beautiful. Could you? Could you have done it this long way that we're doing over here? Yes. Would you have gotten this answer? Yes. Would it have taken you a lot longer? Yes. So just a little shortcut if you want, friends. All right, there's the secant. Got that by flipping the cosine. Number four. Number four is the cosecant. Okay, cosecant I get by flipping the sine function. And I'm looking over here at the sine function. Here's what I got. So I can just basically take this fraction here and flip it. But again, in my head, I'm thinking, okay, if I flip that, I get this. And that's great, but look at that radical in the denominator. So instead of flipping that one, can I just flip this one over here? I think that's what I'm going to do. So if I flip that one, the sine flipped becomes the cosecant. Hey, I'm done. Yay, we did it. We did it. We did it. That one's all done. There's your cosecant. So hopefully that shortcut makes sense. It's really nice and pretty. Number five, we're doing the tan and then the cotan for number six. All right, number five, tangent of theta. Remember, tangent is so called toa, toa, so opposite over adjacent. Let me go back up to my triangle here, friends. Opposite was three. Adjacent, according to theta, is two. Oh, no radicals, no rationalizing. Do I have to reduce that fraction? No, not really. Wow, that was easy. Sweet. Tangent is done. Now to do the cotangent for number six, let's remember that cotan is one over tangent, which is just the flip of this friend. So we can just basically flip the fraction. He becomes two over three. And again, no radical, no rationalizing. We're good to go. Does that always happen with tan and cotans? No, it's just that the problem gave us some really pretty numbers. But just be ready, like you saw here, number one, two, three, and four, that a lot of times you got to look and see if you have to rationalize. No calculators, no decimals. We're using our brains here, friends, and just rationalizing. And that's a really good sample problem of trig using all six functions here, folks. Great job on that. We'll see you next time.